Good morning, seniors. This morning, we're going to start to cover single systems designs. So what is a single systems design? It's much different than what we did in Social Work 360. And I think you all will find it much easier to use uh, as students and as practitioners when you graduate. So sometimes single systems designs are called single subjects design or case study design. Those two terms um, that I just referred to, sometimes we think of them as kind of old fashioned ways to <clears throat> refer to a single systems design. Um, so when you look at publications and research articles, sometimes you'll see these uh, terms interchangeably used, but they all refer to the same thing. What it does is it provides data regarding intervention effectiveness. So it allows you to um, track the impact of an, evalu of an intervention or interventions over time with one client system. It's very practitioner friendly and practitioner oriented. So uh, it, that means that it's very easy to use um, in your office, at your agencies, and you don't need to purchase fancy software that's very expensive in, in order to evaluate your practice. We use single systems design to test hypotheses. Um, it's very easy to apply and interpret. Again, you, you really just draw a graphic depiction of client progress and outcomes. And the unit of analysis used in single systems design is one client system. So that's going to be one individual, one family or couple, one group, one organization, or one community. Let's talk about how single systems design is a little different from group level designs. In Social Work 360 in the spring semester, we focused mostly on group level designs, comparing two groups um, on a specific variable or the impact of an intervention, um, comparing two groups on an outcome or three groups on an outcome. Single systems design is a little bit different. So in SSD, you know, we don't compare two groups like we did in Social Work 360. Your N size for single systems design is always going to be one. So that's going to be one individual, one family or couple. Um, couple kind of falls into family. One group, one organization, or one community. So in SSD, your N size will always be one. Single systems design is also different from group level design in that you do not need SPSS to analyze your data. That should make everybody pretty happy. Instead, what you're going to do as a practitioner is graphically depict your data, which will include your outcomes and your intervention or interventions. And you can do this by hand. Um, you can do this using Microsoft Word. Uh, I mean, it's very, very easy to write out and very, very easy to interpret. Another way that it's significantly different than group level designs is that in the group level design, once you begin your study, you cannot change your intervention. Right, So um, in group level designs, it's kind of an a priori intervention. You, you plan it ahead of time, and then you stick with it. There's, there's no varying um, from what you originally designed. In single systems design research, however, you can change your intervention once your study has begun. And, you know, again, most of the time we use single systems design with our uh, clients, right, as practitioners. And a lot of times we use group level design, um, you know, for research to build the knowledge base, etc. So again, this is more geared towards practitioners. There are several steps of single systems design, and some of this overlaps with the group level design. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is identify what the problem is. And when you're trying to figure out what the problem is, 
try to be very specific. And if you find yourself getting too wordy or guessing, uh, then it's going to be harder to kind of nail down a specific design and, and <coughs> nail down what kind of uh, measures that you're going to use and what outcomes that you want. And you're going to want to work with your client system to decide on agreed upon measurable outcomes. Um, you, you know, what, what, is, what is the goal? How are you going to measure change? Um, how often will you measure change? How will you operationalize those variables? So you need to work with your client system to determine this. You also want to decide on evidence-informed intervention. Um, you know, a lot of times we've heard evidence-based intervention, and these are kind of the same thing, evidence-informed intervention, evidence-based intervention. The only slight difference is that um, evidence-based intervention relies more heavily on um, studies published in research um, that show that, uh, you know, they're supported, that they make a difference. Evidence-informed is just a little less dependent on research studies. So sometimes you'll see these uh, terms used interchangeably. But you're going to want to pick an intervention that has some support behind it. Then you implement your intervention um, depending on the research design that you use. Uh, in single systems design there are exploratory designs, quasi-experimental, and experimental designs. Um, you know, you may have more than one intervention, and you may also have a baseline before an intervention or even after an intervention. And we'll talk about all of those in lecture within uh, this lecture in a, the next couple of days. Then the last thing you want to do is monitor and document um, the outcomes, the client outcomes. And then you talk with your client about progress. You know, is this working? Now, in single systems design, you're not going to get uh, statistical significance like we did with group level designs using SPSS. Um, we look at more clinical significance and did you, did you meet, uh, help the client meet their goals? Clinical significance just means did, it, did the intervention have a, a meaningful impact? in the client system's uh, outcomes in their, in their life and their functioning. And that um, clinical significance, you can't really measure mathematically, uh, but again, you will discuss these outcomes with your client or client system um, to see if you all have succeeded in your work together. Let's take a minute to talk about the graphic depiction of um, your intervention and outcomes. So with single systems design, we use graphs. And these you can just create by hand. Um, you can use uh, Microsoft Word like I did here to create the lines and the ticks um, and the labels and the data points. Uh, but really, you can just draw this out. So let's talk about the anatomy or the structure of what a single systems design graph will look like. Um, the two main lines kind of, kind of looks like a like an L here, um, are probably the most important to really understand in terms of what you're doing. So this is the x-axis down here. And you see these ticks that are uh, vertical here. These ticks represent um, the time. They're, they're time points. So this could be um, time in terms of days. It could be time in terms of weeks. It could be time in terms of months or years. So this, these ticks represent when you are going to um, uh, depict the data, like when you collect the data and report it and record it. Okay. On the y-axis, which is right here, that's where your dependent variable uh, or your outcome measure information will go. So you're going to want to put a label here on the x-axis in terms of uh, you know when you get your measures. And then on the y-axis, on these horizontal ticks, um, these are going to be the um, increments of your dependent variable. right? So if this was you know age in years, I might start with uh, if I was looking at um, kids, you know, five-year-old, 10-year-old, 15-year-old, 20-year-old, 
etc. So you're going to want to make sure that these ticks, uh, the increments of the ticks are uh, capturing uh, the range of the data that you're collecting and measuring. And then you'll want to put a label here in terms of what uh, the dependent variable is. And we'll go through some examples so that you'll, you'll understand what that means. Then there's some other lines here. You see the um, broken lines. Now the broken line that is uh, vertical, if you have an intervention, um, this line is going to indicate when a new intervention begins. And again, there are a lot of different uh, types of single systems designs, exploratory, uh, quasi-experimental and explanatory, so we'll go over what those can look like. But in general, this vertical line designates the start of a new intervention. The horizontal broken line is, is an indication of your goal. So what is the goal that you and your client system have set up in terms of the outcome measure, your dependent variable? So you're going to indicate that horizontally with a dotted line. And then these red dots are your data points, right? And then you connect your data points with these lines. So really what you're creating is a graph. And that way you can visually uh, account for and evaluate progress that your client or client system is making. There are three main categories of single systems design again and this is very similar to the group level design that we learned about in Social Work 360. In group level design we also had exploratory designs, quasi-experimental and explanatory. Again exploratory designs have the highest threats for validity, um, the highest margin of error, right, because there's not a whole lot of control um, for extraneous variables. Um, there's not a whole lot of control for um, comparing, uh, you know, intervention against a baseline. So there's a lot of room for error in exploratory designs, and there is a lot less error uh, in the explanatory design. So <clears throat> in single systems design, there are several different types within each category. Today what we're going to do is just cover the exploratory designs and then when we're in class and we meet in person we'll cover the other two types of designs. So an exploratory single systems design that includes A design, B design, BB1 design, and BC design. And what we'll do as we're covering those is we're now going to switch from looking at an individual which we um, initially did when we were uh, reviewing research and interventions, evidence-based interventions with the pregnant mother. Now we're going to switch into uh, taking a look at an organization as a client system. Okay, so for this example, and we'll use this example to work through all the designs so you can compare and contrast in terms of how they're set up. We're going to use um, Spring High School, uh, and this is just a hypothetical example, for the 2018-19 school year. So let's apply the steps of single systems design to Spring High School. So imagine that you're the school social worker at Spring High School, and so your client system is the organization, the high school. Right, not an individual client, not a little group, but in this example, we're using organization as our client system. You identified the problem, um, or let's say the principal brought attention uh, to the problem of attendance, and, and she said, hey, you know, as a social worker, I, I really need your help uh, figuring out what to do about this low attendance, right? And that is a problem because with low attendance comes lower funding and lower rankings in terms of performance. So you and your organization, the high school, uh, let's say the administrators at the high school, agree that um, what you're going to measure is the average monthly attendance, right, in terms of a percentage. 
um, every month. And you decide on an evidence-informed intervention. And as a school social worker, one of the strategies we use is called positive behavior interventions and supports. And it, with that approach, we start with um, the, the bottom tier, which is, is tier one. And tier one interventions are going to be applied to all students, right? So your organization. And you comb the research and find that um, awareness campaigns, attendance awareness campaigns are one approach, uh, one PBIS approach to improving uh, school-wide attendance. So how do you operationalize that? You came up with an idea that the, let's say, the student media club is going to uh, record or write a 30-second PSA, <clears throat> which they will um, implement every Monday morning during morning announcements, right? So it's a 30-second PSA created by your student school uh, media club. So it would be, you know, fun and relevant and you know, you're hoping that they will influence their peers to learn about the importance of attendance, um, etc. So then you implement your intervention, and then you monitor uh, the outcome on, of attendance on your single systems design graph. Now, like I said, there are four types of exploratory designs. So let's walk through this example with all the different types. The first type of single systems design is called an A design. A design answers the question, does a problem exist? So for this example, maybe your principal came to you and said, oh, you know, I, I think attendance is a problem here. Now normally they would have the data to back it up, but let's just say hypothetically, um, you know, the, the principal said, oh, I think there's a problem. So what you would do is you would measure that. The A design is often referred to as the baseline design. So you'll get a baseline to determine if attendance is really a problem. Now it's important when you're taking your measures, especially with baseline, to try to make sure that you get at least three data points. In every discipline, in physics, in mathematics, in social science, in the hard physical sciences, we aim to collect at least three data points to establish there's a problem. Therefore, I wouldn't just look at September's average monthly attendance because that doesn't tell me about any trends, right? It may be a bad month or it may be a good month for attendance. Um, if I take two months of attendance, September and October only, and they were both pretty low uh, in terms of percent of monthly attendance, I might say, well, that's kind of a coincidence. But if I have three data points, that indicates a trend. And that's usually the minimum number of data points that we need in order to establish that there's a trend or a problem. So with the A design, there is no intervention, right? A just designates baseline. And we're just simply looking at if there's a, a problem with attendance. And remember, down here on the x-axis, I have my uh, time, right, that I'm taking my measures and reporting them. And then over here, my dependent variable is percent attendance, right, the average, the mean. So I have intervals of my ticks um, about 10 in intervals of 10. The reason I don't start with zero in terms of school-wide attendance is that it's unlikely that any monthly attendance will be zero, that zero students will show up on average a month. So when I look at the data, it looks like uh, based on the school-wide data, I should probably start at 60% and go all the way up to 100%, right? We can't, uh, daily attendance won't exceed 100%. We won't have more students attending than are enrolled in the school, right? So you have to think about what's feasible in terms of your ticks here and your labels, and then try to create equal, equally, equally distant intervals between those ticks. Okay, so let's say um, these are our results. So the goal 
is 90% average monthly attendance. And then here, what we do, and we can get these records from the school computer system and run a report, and then we depict it here on our graph. It looks like September, we had about 70% attendance, October, maybe 73, and November, we had back down to maybe 71% attendance. So if I if you look at this graph, would you say that there that attendance is a problem? Does a, a problem exist with attendance? I would say yes, right? And again, based on our goal for school-wide attendance, um, we see a you know a, a big gap here. And so this tells us that we have some work to do, right? Um, typically in social work, we, you know, when we're working with clients, we don't, we don't just do the A design, um, in practice. We usually, you know, add an intervention after that if we want a baseline, but, um, you know, for the, the sake of explaining what A design is, and sometimes in research, we want to establish a problem or call attention to an unaddressed problem in your initiator role. Sometimes we do use this design. The second type of exploratory design is called the B design. Okay, the first one, A design, was just baseline. B design um, indicates we're going to start out of the gates with an intervention, right? Sometimes we don't do a baseline before our intervention because maybe we don't have time or we jump in in the middle of the year and we don't, you know, we, we missed um, that data from, you know, previous months or previous weeks. Um, or previous behaviors with our client system. So sometimes we just jump in with an intervention um, before we do a baseline. So what we can, what, what the B design can tell us is, is the problem changing with the intervention. Now in B design, we will start on day one implementing the intervention and it will continue, that intervention will continue all throughout uh, December through May. Okay, we, we don't stop the intervention, we don't change the intervention. B design means we use that one particular intervention throughout. And remember our intervention um, based on from our PBIS approach was that 30 second PSA every Monday morning, right? So again, here's our goal, school-wide 90% attendance and I just kind of made up some data so we can talk it over, but I will record here as the school social worker, the average monthly attendance, which uh, remember I got the data from the school uh, computer system from December through May. Now, if you take a look at the trend here, what conclusions can you come to about the impact of that 30 second once a week PSA uh, intervention. Did it help? Did it work? Did it improve attendance for school-wide? Based on this data, it did. In fact, we not only met our goal, we exceeded it, right? Now, sometimes, uh, you know, plateauing is a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So if we were to see a trend, uh, let's say our three data points were all at 93% or they were all at 90% um, and they're not going up, does that a bad thing? No. Again, what we ideally want to do is meet our goal and help our client maintain or our client system maintain. So sometimes plateauing um, often is a good thing and not necessarily a bad thing. So again, this shows a support for our intervention, right? Our attendance uh, announcements. The third type of exploratory single systems design is what we call BB1, okay? And BB1 is a little more complex than B design. So this is um, adding something, a component to it. 
So this answers the question, is change associated with a variation of intervention? What that means is we start out using the 32nd PSA school-wide announcements, right, in, in December. Those school-wide announcements that are 30 seconds every Monday continue in January and February. However, this vertical line indicates a change in our initial intervention. Now, B1 means it's the same intervention. It's that, that public service announcement that the, the media club has designed. But the B1 indicates either a change in intensity or frequency of our initial intervention. Again, B1 indicates that the original intervention has changed in terms of either frequency or intensity. And that's very important to remember. And this line shows us when that change occurred. So what might B1 be? in terms of our example with the spring high school. Well, it, remember our original intervention was 32nd PSA every Monday. If I wanted to change B1, uh, our intervention uh, to increase in frequency, then instead of just Monday mornings, I might have the PSA Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for 30 seconds. Right, that would be a change in frequency. If I wanted to change it in terms of intensity, then I might have our original 30 second PSA become a, a two minute PSA with music and you know all the bells and whistles um, to, to kind of jump up the intensity of that Monday morning PSA. Right. So again, B1 means you change either the frequency or intensity of your original intervention. So let's look at this hypothetical data. What this tells us is that we didn't see much change just using the 30 second PSA every Monday morning. But when we uh, changed it to let's say the, the frequency uh, was increased, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then that really started to make a difference. So when we look at the left side of this line compared to the right side, what this data tells us is that having the PSA more regularly, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in terms of increasing frequency, was more effective at impacting average monthly attendance than just having the Monday morning PSA announcement, right? So then we can make some recommendations after, um, you know, we are done with our study to the administration about, you know, how to maintain this. Okay, and the last type of exploratory design that we're going to talk about is called the BC design, okay? Now, B phase is going to be our original 30-second Monday morning PSA, okay? What the C represents is a completely different intervention, okay? Not the same intervention that changes in frequency or intensity, but a completely different intervention. And remember when I was talking about one of the differences between group level design from our spring course and single systems design, we can change our intervention um, kind of based on best practice and how we see fit and, you know, all the, the evidence in the middle of our study or at some point in our study. So this helps us to answer the question, is an intervention different from the original impacting change? Maybe we want to compare the impact of um, two interventions to determine which one may be best, right? Again, these are completely different interventions. And this vertical line indicates when we begin our completely different intervention and when this one, original one, ends, right? So when this line is here, the B intervention stops. The C intervention begins, 
right? You won't have them occurring at the same time throughout your study. So what I want you to think about is what might be a different school-wide intervention that you think it would be effective at increasing the average attendance per month so that we could, the school could meet their goal, right? Um, so let's take a look. So our original intervention, the 32nd Monday PSA, um, changed our monthly attendance, average monthly attendance slightly. But then when we tried a new intervention, what does this tell us? Did it make things better or make things worse? we can conclude that the B intervention was much more effective than the C intervention. So what I would like you all to do, and this is for attendance extra credit, is below this video, in this tab on Blackboard, there is a discussion board. And what I'd like you to do is to post your idea for what the C intervention could be. This post must be done before, by 8.50 on Friday this week in order to get your attendance extra credit point. This is our second attendance extra credit point. Again, this is to reward people who are viewing um, this lecture online um, and uh, in order to get that extra attendance point, that extra credit point, you'll need to indicate on the discussion board what you think the C phase intervention would be. Again, remember, C is completely different than this one. It cannot be a public service announcement. So put some thought into that based on your experience in high school and some of the knowledge that you've gained in, in your classes and just put a, you know, a few words together talking about your idea about what might be the C intervention. And uh, we will start from there when we meet on Friday. And then again, on Friday, we'll pick up from there and go over the quasi-experimental designs and the experimental designs. And we'll run through some more examples. This concludes the lecture um, on exploratory single systems design. See y'all in class.